Morning, Derek Watson here, the angry dentist. New car today. Hopefully a bit quieter. How have you been? How have I been? Look at this. Look at the. Can you see the bags under my eyes? Can you see the bags under my eyes? I was up till about half past twelve this morning, and you know why? Stress. Stress. I do like dentistry. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic job. But my God, is it a stressful job. I had, um, I had a whole, whole raft of loony patients in yesterday. I mean, really, you know how biorhythms all coincide. Yesterday was a day when every loony patient of every type decided to come in. I had my last patient, there was a lovely guy very wealthy guy, owns a, a string of local businesses and uh, I've reopened the surgery for him on a Saturday before free of charge because he needed a root treatment etc. His teeth were in a terrible state. We ended up doing a bridge for him etc etc and then um, but he just won't brush his teeth. He's just decided that he doesn't want to and this is what I can't understand right. He came in yesterday Hello, how are you and everything? We always we always do plaque control on everyone, so I've got him to rinse out with some disclosing solution. Plaque all over his teeth. This is not obviously the first time I've seen it, the fourth time probably we've done this. And I just don't understand it. Perhaps someone can explain it to me. Someone, an intelligent guy, has had some advanced crown and bridge work, which he's now not eligible for because his plaque's out of control, decides to come in for a checkup probably can brush his teeth but chooses not to and m moreover chooses not to on the on the one day he's coming to the dentist and I think this is a misconception among patients it, it's a, a transference of responsibility you know they think that uh, and I actually <laughs> I've got a lot of sympathy with this because I'm not a religious person right I I adopt the philosophy that my history teacher Mr Jolly explained to me when I was at the grammar school which is that the Middle Ages philosophy which was that in the Middle Ages they weren't all that religious because they it was everybody had their own craft you know I mean you wouldn't uh, do a carpenter's work but you had carpenters to do that you wouldn't make a horseshoe because they had smiths to do that and they didn't pray because they had the religious people did all that and that is that really suited me and that's the way that uh, you know I like I like if anyone asks if I'm religious I say no other people you know more than compensate for my lack of religion so uh, anyway but so this guy I mean you know I can probably see where he's coming from a bit in that he's like well it's the dentist job to keep me healthy you know why do I go to the dentist why what's the what's my role in all this is just to turn up once every six months and pay whatever it costs to have a checkup and that's what he's doing but it's incredibly frustrating because he needed a scale and polish and I don't mean like you know it was a bit marginal I mean he's got lots of scale on the inside of his lower incisors and um, so I said to him you know do you want me to do your scale and polish at least and he's like oh no 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 I'm a, I'm a busy chap you know I'm sorry I can't I can't, you know, and of course you get a nose for these things and basically he's just saying, no, I don't, I don't fancy that at the moment, you know, I just don't, I don't want anything done, I've just come in for a checkup. I don't want anything done, so off he's gone, he doesn't want anything done and he hasn't brushed his teeth on the one day and honestly, I'm talking to patients now, all right, as dentists, it does not matter to us if you brush your teeth. I know we we uh, we will help you. We will try and show you whether you're doing it properly or not. But really, it is of no concern of ours if you choose not to brush your teeth. It matters to you. It does not matter to us. If you want to come in to see us and your teeth aren't brushed, we will not be upset. We'll we'll feel sorry for you, but we, <laughs> you know, life goes on for us. We I, I've got my teeth. Okay, I don't need yours. So, okay, so there's an example of a bloke who's, 
who, uh, but, but as I say, what the mystery to me is, he probably sees me for two checkups a year. I don't care, 363 days of the year, he can have, leave his teeth covered with plaque. Why can he not, as a courtesy to me, on the two days that he comes into the surgery, just brush his teeth? You know, just to show me he can do it. I don't even care whether he does it or not. I just want him to prove to me that he could do it if he wanted to. And the patient's always says, oh, you're going to nag me about brushing my teeth, aren't you? No, I'm not. I never, ever nag patients about brushing their teeth. What I do is I stain all the plaque on their teeth up red and I give them a mirror. That's all I do. That is all I do. I do not even say a word. I do not even look at their teeth. They look at their teeth even before I've looked and I say to them look uh, let's have a look at your brushing stain up your teeth blah, 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 have a rinse have a mirror and then I wander off for, for like 30 seconds or something and they're going yeah oh yeah do look a bit like a Dracula don't I yeah I suppose you're gonna nag me no I'm not I'm just gonna point out to you what what the situation is anyway he was he was loony number one and believe it or not he was the least loony of the whole lot the, the next up in the scale of looniness was another bloke who uh, who came in, new patient, always start, starts off in a, well, it's always a bad way, oh, I um, suppose you're going to want to know my dental history, aren't you? No! <laughs> I mean, the relevant stuff, yes. The whole lot, no. <laughs> so, oh, well, it all began when I was a boy, age nine. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. I had a dentist. He was a terrible dentist. And then, uh, but but later on, the story took and he said, oh, and then my next dentist was quite a good dentist." I'm thinking, "Oh, this is good. This story is taking and you know, it's like it's got a, like a happy ending." And then he said, "Oh, but then uh, the last dentist was uh, uh, the one after that was terrible. Um, she she tried to take all my teeth out, and um, while she was trying to take my teeth out." she um, tried to uh, smash my tooth in half with a mirror and I'm like okay okay I've got to stop you there okay I've got to stop you there just please we need some clarification of this she tried to take all your teeth out and then she tried to pick smash one of them in half with a mirror yeah absolutely she tried to smash one of your teeth in half with a mirror yeah well uh, she got, she picked up a mirror and she really, really banged my tooth very hard indeed. She was quite brutal. She was trying to break the tooth in half. Was she? No. Well, no. Not actually sort of trying to break it in half. Oh, okay. Uh, but this happened while, you, while she was taking out all your teeth? Yes. Well, no. Not really. It was a checkup. So, so I said, okay, right, let's uh, let's just clarify then. The patient was doing a checkup. The, the, the dentist was doing a checkup, and she was she was doing it, like you know wobbling all your teeth to see if any of them were loose, and then she decided to tap one of them with a mirror. He said, yes. This guy, he's got a, a tilted tooth at the back and, and a load of food packing, which has obviously been going on for years. And so he's got decay in the back of one of his molars down there. And the, and the hole is massive. I mean, the reason why he'd come in was because it's rubbing his tongue. And the reason why it's rubbing his tongue is it, it's all collapsed in like the uh, like the uh, top of a volcanic of Krakatoa. It's all like turned into a complete hole and and the edges rubbing his tongue so so that's what has brought him in now this guy I mean I know he's an irregular attender you're not and I like to think that he's gonna we're gonna turn him into a regular attender but chances are we're not he's only come in over this one issue right so obviously what happens is other issues get brought up when these patients come in but you have to understand that really all they've come in is over this one issue and they only want this one issue and, and the issue as far as he was concerned was that it was rubbing his tongue not even that it was decayed or that he might lose the tooth although he will and um, so I'm thinking so I said to him okay well now, what do you want fixed you know what's the plan what's what's your what are your needs you know so, uh, and he's like well I don't know and, I, and I'm thinking well 
I need to try and find out where he is on the scale of can you just smooth it off and I'll go away uh, uh, to I have decided to turn over a new leaf and I want everything fixed. So he says also I've got another hole on the top right hand side here. Uh, so I look, sure enough he's had an occlusal amalgam fall out or something so he's got a cavity up there it's not, not really going anywhere. So I said to him well, well what do you want me to fix everything or do you just want me to you know do, do the urgent stuff? I said I don't know. So I'm like, so I thought, okay, let's go through this one by one. What you've got, you've got a hole on the top right hand side. Do you want that filled up? You tell me. <laughs> okay, and this, I mean, some people are just incapable of making decisions. That is true. I and mean, people, there are some people who are paralysed by by choice, and I think he, he's one of those. Um, but. Um, Anyway, in the end, we agreed uh, that uh, I would write down for him what I recommended, which turned out to be like a scale and polish, filling up the top. This tooth down the bottom, if, if you're a dentist knowing it's a lower seven and the eight has uh, moved, moved medially, and so he's got the back of the sevens missing and the eight has literally tilted over the top of the seven. So the first thing that's gonna happen when we try and take that tooth out is that uh, the, it's gonna decoronate, and the second is that uh, it won't come out because the eight's locked it in place. So I think I'm going to send him off to the oral surgeon. But but um, I mean, my point about him was that we we were sunk really before we started with him because he has got a mental narrative, and a lot of patients have this. It's another sort of common problem with patients in that um, uh, at nine he decided that the dentists were the villains in life, and. Uh, you, you have to be very wary of patients who come in and say I had a problem with my teeth that was down to my dentist and then I had another problem with my teeth that was down to my next dentist and then I had another problem with my teeth which was down to the dentist I had after that and then at that point you're thinking okay all I am going to do is get added to this list of dentist uh, dentist as villain this narrative dentist as villain um, and so you know, you have to, you know, your, your sort of defensive alarm bells have to go off at that point. Because we, we are defensive now. One thing I've noticed compared to the 1980s was that um, you're defensive with everybody now. You're absolutely, you're just, in, and it's not to the advantage of the patients. The patients are immensely disadvantaged by this defensive uh, approach that we have to take with them all. They get much less done. They get, they get done. They don't, they don't achieve their objectives because they force us on to be defensive, you know? I mean, let me just take you on to the third and final example of the reason why I, uh, I had to uh, uh, watch a bit of telly last night to de-stress. And that is a guy, perfectly nice, very presentable guy, been in, uh, had again quite a bit of dentistry, a few gold crowns done. He needed a crown on the lower left six. I said to him, what type of crown do you want? He, he said, um, I tend to recommend gold if I can on back teeth. We don't do many gold crowns on back teeth, but I always say, you know, you know, it involves less tooth reduction and um, uh, and uh, I personally, I just think they're, they're, they're the best crown. But of course, they're anaesthetic. Um, you know, in some people's eyes, they just want something that's tooth colored. So anyway, but he said, no, 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 he's got other gold crowns on his back teeth. And he said, no, it's at the back, no one's gonna see it. If you recommend gold, uh, that's fine, it's the same cost. So um, we did a gold crown on him. So when we fitted it yesterday and he's sitting there and uh, and the gold crown's on the bracket table. And uh, I said, uh, you know, there's your crown there, have a look. And uh, so he, he sort of, windscreen wipes going mad. Uh, so he picked it up and he said, um, doesn't look gold. <laughs> and it looked gold, you know what I mean? It looked gold. I, I, I figured sometimes if this metal is very highly polished, it's quite difficult to sort of, if it's matte gold, then it's easier. If it's very highly polished gold, then, then obviously it catches the lights and everything. So sometimes that can alter. And also people see colors differently and la, 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 and I thought it might have been on shine, the light, it might have been sh the bracket table light might have been shining on or something. So I said to him, what do you mean? And he said, um, 
it, it doesn't look gold. And I said, yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know there's a controversy about, you know, some dentists doing gold crowns and not, not, you know, and telling the lab to make it out of uh, cheap old rubbish. But I mean, we don't do that. I mean, this is proper heavy gold. So, um, <laughs> I gave it, I said, to, I said, that looks gold to me. Does that not look gold to you? And he said, no. He said, it might be white gold. And I'm like, uh, is gold gold? <laughs> And I took it off, and you can tell with a gold crown, these things are heavy. I mean, they are discernibly heavy in your hand, you know. Not not that I necessarily a patient is going to really appreciate that. But I've stuck it in his hand, and I said, look, look, throw it around a bit. You'll you'll see it is gold. Anyway, uh, he just gave it back to me because he didn't know, you know. He, he He's not, you know, he's just... Uh... So... Uh, he took he, he picked up my um, spray topical anesthetic my silent dolan or spray or whatever and round the top of the yellow plastic bottle there's a tiny little gold knurl like a, you know like spray cans have a tiny little metal seal which is crimped on to hold the contents in so he's that, and that's a, a sort of gold a gold lacquer type color to it you know like a brass like a brass knurl and he said it's not gold like that's gold. And I'm like, no, that's because that's not gold. You think I've got a local anaesthetic that's got a gold knurled top on it? That is not gold, okay? That is, that is either brass or gold paint. I don't know. I know, to be honest with you, I don't care. I just want to get this brown on and get you out of the surgery before you accuse me of rape. I am just, <laughs> oh my God, this is a message to the GDC, okay? The GDC, right? When you've got a dentist in front of you, right? when you've got a dentist in front of you and you're sitting there and you've got everything under the microscope and you've got every scrap of evidence, you've got the notes, you've got a dump of the computer records, you've got all the x-rays, You've got the patient there, and he's sitting there, more often she's sitting there, all smart, blah, 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 looking very respectable, Mrs. Bucket. Just please have a thought, have a thought for us poor dentists that are having to put up with this every day. And this is not, I mean, that took, yesterday was atypical. We had three of them in yesterday, but we have one a day. We have one a day, and I am not... How can I put it? If I if there's a, co a conflict of personality between me and a patient, then it's in both our interests if they find somewhere that can help them more than I can. You know, I, I, it very rarely rarely happens. But uh, if um, certainly if the patient comes in and starts um, telling me how to do things, or you know, or or there's any there's any sort of real serious weirdness going on, then. Um, like um, we had a patient who uh, came in and said she was in severe pain that's right yeah she was she said she was in in severe pain that was uh, 11 out of 10 the usual and this is how you find out if patients are, are, are in pain or not because you say to them if you are on a scale of 0 to 10 where 10 is having your arms and legs pulled off while you're being burnt with a blowtorch and nor is no pain where are you on that scale and if they are if they are exaggerating they'll say 12 and if they say 12 or 11 or 20 or something then you know that they are it's uh, there's a large intellectual component to their pain um, and uh, so she came in and oh yeah she was in so much pain and then uh, she almost refused to leave the surgery um, because I said to her basically she was over brushing her teeth She'd literally got a pulpitis from over brushing her teeth and I told her that's what it was and she didn't she wasn't having it so What did she do? She she got in her car phoned her husband up. She told me afterwards um, and um, Made an appointment at another dentist locally fine don't have a problem with that 
went to see the dentist, dentist did some tests, told her that um, she was overbrushing her teeth and so she rang me up that afternoon, oh Mr Watson, oh, I, thought I'd, I thought I'd give you a ring because I need to apologise. Really? I mean, what? I didn't even know. Well, apologise for what? You know, being a, being a massive pain in the surgery this morning. Patients don't usually ever apologise about that. But, uh, oh, you know, I after I saw you, I decided I needed a second opinion, so I went and my husband booked me in with another dentist, and he's confirmed that you were right. And uh, um, I just, so I thought I'd ring to apologise and just... Uh, you know, check that uh, the no hard feelings, you know, over me giving you such a hard time this morning um, and being such a royal PIA, you know, in, in effect. And, um, you know, when my husband was driving me to the dentist, he said, my husband was driving me to the dentist, he said, do you know what? He said, you do, you scrub your teeth. He said, he's right, you scrub your teeth like a lunatic. He said, he's right about that, you know. And she swore blind to me, of course, because it suited her narrative, that uh, she didn't hardly ever brush her teeth. And when she did, it was like a fairy, you know, right? real delicate, whoa. Anyway, that was, I mean, I, I decided that it would be better if she continued to see the dentist that she registered with, you know, the new dentist, rather than came back because it's, a, to be honest with you, I did, there's so much stress in this job. You do not need patients who cause you stress. And I'm atypical in that, I know. Um, most dentists never, ever, ever say goodbye to a patient. The patients can abuse them, can lie to them, can uh, uh, refuse to uh, do anything that they're asked, etc, etc, etc. Turn up late, fail appointments, and the dentists never chuck them out because they, they've got this sort of fear that as soon as they throw one patient out, that patient will tell all the other patients and that will be the end of the surgery. But I tell you, it's not the end of the surgery. Um, and you need to do it because um, if you don't, uh, then it could well be the end of you. And I do it. And I... It's, it's Yesterday it was nearly the end of me. Right, that's it for today. Another day, another dollar coming up. I wish you all the best in your practices. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.